Hello, everyone. Um, I had such a great week last night, last week clinically, and I've been meaning to do this video since um, I had two really memorable patients, and one of them uh, has gave me permission to share her story, which I thought I would do uh, with the hope that I can help everyone else also do more of this. Really simple technique, which kind of guarantees that you're really going to make a difference uh, to your patients. So what more could you ask for? Uh, I, there is nothing that will be better for business and there is nothing that's better for your, well, for, almost for your soul really than to feel like you're, you're using your time on this planet to make a difference to people. And there's a really simple technique which I, I used on both of them, uh, which and, and I've used it lots of times before, which really makes people um, get the real benefit from their treatment. But it starts with understanding, first of all, that the presenting complaint is not the problem. So now, um, both the case I'm going to tell you about is uh, is really interesting because it really illustrates this well. Now, I actually happen to believe that that the the presenting complaint is nearly always the tip of the iceberg, even for really simple things. So you know, you know, a young girl who wants her lip treated um, to a little bit fuller to make it symmetrical. It's pretty simple. It's so technically easy that often we'll jump in and go straight to doing it. Um, without digging a little bit deeper about how this is really how she is anticipating this is going to change her life, and that's where the, the where it gets really interesting, uh, and that's why I'll start with uh, with my story, which is someone who presented with a dip in her nose, um, which sounds, um, you know, it was actually technically a little bit challenging for the reason that she had the dip, but um, but the the most important thing is it sounded simple. Um, when you got talking about what the problem is, it became a lot more interesting. And as I said, I have asked specifically for her permission to share the story. Um, but the reason that she had a dip in her, in her nose was that she had had a cocaine addiction, which she had um, thankfully seemingly got control of at the moment. Uh, and she hadn't used cocaine for a long period of time, but she had this dip on her nose. So now the dip on the nose and the cocaine addiction is obviously understanding. And we all, none of us want a dip on our nose that wasn't there before. But the really interesting thing is, uh, which, I, which the point I'm really trying to make is, why, why was this so obsessing for her? Now, that actually, this dip had actually driven her into almost agoraphobia, which is she would not go out in public at all. But she had a, a sort of hierarchy of, of places that she could go and couldn't go. And for her, the worst possible place to go was where other mums were. So that's kind of, um, you know, the school run uh, was her worst nightmare. In fact, as we got talking about the different... The different parts of her day that would um, that that could make a difference that, that that the treatment could make a difference to the school run was ultimately the thing she wanted the most um, to be able to do, but it may have been too big of a step for her to go straight into. But when someone first presents and they say, "I don't have got a dip in my nose," if you keep asking why that's troubling them and when it's troubling them, particularly when, so when is this problem? when does it exert an, an emotional drag on your day is a quite a good question because it's not always that it's that it's on their mind but it just kind of it's a slightly unpleasant moment when they think of it now for her it was way beyond unpleasant it was awful and it was it was any time there was another mum around and the reason for that was because the, her no the dip on her nose represented to her shame um about about what she'd done her own flaws and the way i i came to understand it was it's a little bit like walking around with all your vulnerability exposed all the time, like your worst, your deepest, darkest secret on display for everyone to see. Um, and that's obviously massively difficult to live your life like that. So, so the, the, the story was mu is much more significant than her nose and than, than the actual aesthetic. So the aesthetics actually probably wasn't, as far as cocaine abuse goes, you, I've seen way worse. It, was, it, it, it wasn't as significant as in aesthetically as it might have been to the way it was holding back her life. But you've got to understand that all people who are aging, um, you know, have a, a slightly asymmetrical, um, you know, feature or a small top lip or something. For them, it's it's much deeper than just the than just the um, the aesthetics. We we have to make sure things fit an aesthetic rule because otherwise you shouldn't do the treatment if you're making something different but it's not better. Um, you you're aesthetically not helping them. Um, but really what we're looking for is to understand where their story would be better. And this is where I got to with this, uh, this lady, which is, if I could change her nose, what could she then do differently in her life? That's a really important question because therein lies the proof that you are doing, you're going to make her life better. Um, and so she, we talked about different things that, and 
as I said, the, the ultimate thing she wanted was to be able to go on the school run, but she hadn't done that in four months or something like that. So it'd be quite hard for her to go straight to that. So I said, what else are you not doing that you would like to be able to do? And, and we came up with something less threatening, which is just to go out for dinner. So she had a nice um, Italian restaurant that she used to go to. Um, and she wanted to be able to go out to that restaurant again. And so uh, so that's what I said. Also, I once out of analyzed her nose and decided a safe way of doing it, because by the way, like if you've had cocaine uh, damage to your nose, you've got a decrease in blood flow to mucous membranes in particular. So you've got to do this procedure without affecting tissues that are too closely aligned to mucous membranes. So that, that's just a technical point worth knowing about. Um, but the difference the the difference i wanted to make the difference for her was that she could go out to dinner so i knew i could create a technical difference and at that point this is the, the most important thing i say to you before you do the procedure when you've understood someone's story and you can see where life where their life is being held back and you know the specific moment where if you can create a change their life will become different ask them to commit to making that change before you do the procedure so this is what what i essentially said to her is your well-being is ultimately the only outcome that matters. I shouldn't do this procedure unless I improve your well-being. You've told me that your well-being will be improved if you can do something simple like go out for dinner. So if I can deliver on the aesthetic result, will you make a commitment to me now to actually go out for dinner? Um, and patients are often really surprised to, to hear you say this, but they, they're also always, always happy to hear you say it because it's almost, they're almost wanting to do, they, they know that's what they want to do. And we all have this ability to, to kind of focus on the problem in the hope that we will one day be able to meet the solution, but we don't always make a plan. So you get your patient to make a plan to to do the thing that they that they are hoping they're going to be able to do if you if they if they correct their nose, but whatever the issue is. But you, but they haven't often said yes to someone. I commit to do that, and it's a beautiful thing because they will um, nine out of ten times they will do it. Um, and they, they actually often may not do it if, if you haven't asked them to commit to it. So ask for that commitment. Um, and you should be able to see then um, that their life actually changed. And that, this is exactly what's happened um, in this case. So uh, I hope that that can, but I tell you what you'll get as a practitioner is when they come back for their follow up and they say, I actually did go out for dinner and I did do that thing which I've been dreading doing and it was great and I pulled it off, you will feel amazing. Um, I know a lot of practitioners have kind of doubts over, you know, you know, we've all got that old uncle who thinks that aesthetics is superficial and 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 isn't really, you know, something that you should be doing with your qualification. All of that can go away for you when you know that you're rewriting people's lives. You're essentially helping them rewrite a better story for themselves, and you're actually the catalyst that gets things back on track for people. So, um, so that's how you make a difference in medical aesthetics. So. Um, Actually, don't just go and make the aesthetic difference. Ask for them to commit to making the action that they are hoping is they're going to be able to do. Like for some people, it's as simple as I'll take a selfie more often, or I'll go on Instagram, or uh, you know, whatever. I'll go internet dating, whatever it is. Um, but ask them to to commit to it, and you will hopefully get a lot more reward um, while you do your job. Um, you will really see the difference you make in people's lives, and uh, it's really fun. It's incredibly rewarding, um, and I hope that helps basically. So um, if you think that's been useful, it'd be great to know. If you've got any stories of your own that you can anonymize, it'd be great to share them because um, it'd be great to hear from from other people who are uh, who, who are already doing. I know loads of practitioners already. This is the best part of our jobs, isn't it? When you actually see someone's life improve. So if you've got a good story and you can make it change a few details so that it's, it's not recognizable by the patient, it'd be great to share that. Um, you could tag anyone who's interested in this or share it if you think it's worthwhile. Um, but that's my kind of consultation tip for um, uh, enjoying your practice more and making more of a difference and making sure that your treatments do what they are really supposed to do, which is improve well-being. So I hope that, hope that works. I've just noticed because the way I'm doing it, I haven't seen the people waving, but hi, Julie, uh, Karen, Louise. Um, thanks for your comments. Hi, Lauren. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Um, tag someone, share it. Uh, really appreciate your comments. And thank you all very much for watching. See you again next time.